Hey, welcome back. So in the last video, we derived an expression that looks something like this. We said the log of the rate constant at temperature two over temperature one is equal to minus the activation energy over R times by one over T2 minus one over T1. So there's lots of different ways you can write this equation, but uh, you'll be given something like this on an exam or um, yeah, I'll probably give it to you on the exam. So let's go ahead and we'll take an example. So imagine you've got a reaction and the rate constant doubles as you increase the temperature um, from say 25 to 29 degrees C. So that's not that unusual actually. So rate constants here are doubling for a four degrees C increase in temperature. Can we use that information to solve for the activation energy? So this looks kind of neat, right? Uh, in fact, this looks impossible because we're not told the rate constants, but we're told the fact that they double. So there's the key thing here. So what are we going to take as T1 and what are we going to take as T2? So my guess is that most of the time we would expect T1 to be the smaller temperature. So T1, let's make that be 25 degrees and T2 be 29 degrees C. And uh, what does it mean by doubling? Well, essentially we're saying the rate constant at T2 over the rate constant at T1, right? So that's K2 over K1 is equal to two. And we're told it's double, so we'll take that as exact, but uh, probably that's not really an exact number, is it? So um, the first thing you'll notice is that I've written lowercase t, and up here I've written uppercase t. And the reason for that is that when I write uppercase t, I mean the absolute temperature. And we can convert from Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273.15, so that's 298 Kelvin. And for T2, that is just, uh, what, four degrees hotter, so that would be 302 Kelvin. So if we look at our problem, um, right, it looks like we've got a lot of information here. So we've got T2, we've got T1, uh, we've got this ratio of K2 over K1, okay? And, uh, well, the gas constant is something we can just look up. So we can go ahead and we can rearrange that equation, and we can go ahead and we can plug in. So we want um, the activation energy. So it is equal to minus R times by the log of K2 over K1, all divided by one over T2 minus one over T1. And at this point here, we're ready to plug in numbers. And I'd always kind of encourage you to, to do the rearrangement in algebra and then plug in the numbers at the end. That way you're not writing down the numbers forever. So let me just move the screen up a bit and let's proceed. All right, sorry, I just had to move everything up there a little bit. In fact, I'll go ahead and start on a new line here. So my activation energy is minus the gas constant. So again, the gas constant we're going to use is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. Because we want our activation energy to have units of joules per mole, uh, we're going to use this one over the liter atmosphere one. And again, the natural logarithm of that ratio, we set that ratio is 2. So we can just put the number 2 in there. And then on the bottom, it's gonna be kind of a pain to enter in our calculator. So we've got one over T2, so that's one over 302 Kelvin minus one over 298 Kelvin. So our calculator will happily give us a number here. And the number here is something like 129,795. So uh, that would be 130,000, so 130,000. Okay, and I'm going to underline that because I think I should have three significant figures here. In terms of my units, what do I have here? So on the bottom, I've got 1 over Kelvin, uh, 1 over Kelvin. So they're going to give us 1 over Kelvin. And on the top, I can see I've got a 1 over Kelvin term. So I can actually go ahead and cancel the 1 over Kelvin on the top with the 1 over Kelvins on the bottom. And then that just leaves me with joules per mole. And so that looks pretty nice. And in fact, we've got thousands of joules per mole. So instead of writing 130,000, we can write 130. And the SI prefix for 1,000 is kilo. So it's 130 kilojoules per mole. And that would be our activation energy. So that's pretty awesome. So that energy, right, that is that barrier. And that's a pretty steep barrier, right? So that reaction's kind of slow because it's got that enormous activation energy barrier compared to the last one we looked at. All right, that's pretty fun, huh?